Well, John, it certainly wasn't the prettiest at times, but it's three points nonetheless. How are you feeling after that? Yeah, pr pretty much. You summed it up very well there. Not not a vintage performance, uh, I think, and, and, and not pretty. A really tough game against a side who I will be surprised if they end up um, not in this league next year because I thought they were really good today and they gave us a really stern test. And they've got some really good players and <laughs> they're coached really well as well. So um, I thought all of those factors towards the back end of the season when you're playing sides that are in the bottom four and they are playing for their livelihoods and um, they're scrapping like that. It's very, very difficult. So to come away with three points is really, really pleasing. Certainly a slow start. What did you say at half time to the players? Yeah, so I, I sort of took the took the slow start on 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 my own shoulders because we'd um, we'd expected Cambridge to press us slightly differently, and sometimes there's nothing you can do. Sometimes you watch all the footage you want, and they do something differently, and, and all of a sudden it pops up in a different way. So um, we made a couple of adjustments in terms of how we were going to get out with the ball and how we were going to play. And I thought for the first, I suppose, 20 minutes of the second half, up until we scored the goal, we were excellent in, in terms of our possession. We were a lot more purposeful. We created a lot more space. We got Joe Morell on the ball a lot more, and we created some really good opportunities. Maybe not chances and we were probably quite low on the old uh, chance count today, but we created some really good opportunities and that was really pleasing because I think the longer the game went on, I think the more joy we were going to get. The, um, I suppose the only, thing, the only negative is when we scored, naturally we sort of went five yards back and, and took a foot off the gas um, and didn't quite replicate that the first 20 minutes of the second half, but ultimately we, we'd done enough. With all those factors you mentioned in your first answer, just how important does that make that victory? Oh, hugely. I, I said to the... The guys in there, when you've um, when you've had a long old football career career like myself, you know that um, those sort of victories are are just you know, that, they're massively important. The, the, the Cheltenham's at, at home when everything's great and you end up winning 4-0, yeah, that, that's brilliant. But when you have to come away and, and, and grind out a win uh, away at Cambridge, and like I can't emphasise it enough, they're a good side. Um, who, <laughs> yeah, like I said, they, they, they're decent enough uh, to cause problems. And when you do that and you do all of the, the right things like we did, especially when, when we went 1-0 up in terms of our defensive responsibility, the, the blocks, the, um, the work rate, just making sure that we didn't give them anything, uh, hugely important. It's yet another well-worked set-piece goal in the second half. A slightly different routine this time around, albeit, but it's, an, it's another goal. Is that a product of something you've been working on on the training ground? Yeah, don't ask me, ask our um, set-piece guru, uh, Joe Podomo. No, genuinely, genuinely, it's, it's, it's brilliant for me. The, um, the amount I can hand over to, to Joe, and he's, he's so good in that area and, and such an expert, I would love to come on camera and take credit for it, but um, the only thing I'm going to take credit for is handing the set-pieces over to Joe because he's so good at it, um, and the lads as well, because the lads listen and they take it on board, and set-pieces are really crucial. We, we saw that the other night when we scored three against Bolton and another one today. They can be the difference in the way we defended as well. Um, just, I think we all know. I think we all know how important they are. Tom Lowry, I don't think the fans stopped chanting his name in that last half an hour. How pleased are you to be able to bring him back onto the pitch? I didn't, I didn't hear it. Were they singing a song about him? <laughs> yeah, it was not, I just said to him, hey, you're, you're really popular, mate. That's all I heard for the last half hour. And it was, it was great. He's not played, I think, since September. And he's had a long old road to um, recovery. And he's done brilliantly well to, to keep his head down. He came back into, come back into the fold over the past few weeks. It's been a slow process then because we wanted to make sure that we get it right from a physical standpoint. And so it was, yeah, it was, it was great. He nearly came on the other night and, and didn't. And, and actually, probably testament to him, we, we brought him on in this type of game where it is very scrappy, but when the ball settles and we, we can actually play, we, we felt that there would be some really good opportunities for him to, to come out on the other side of it. And he, and he did, I think he affected the game really well. We, he ended up playing sort of out on the right towards the back end and he's got to have that flexibility. But um, overall, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm as pleased as the fans are to see him back on the pitch. And Tom Lowry doing what Tom Lowry does, almost set up a goal as soon as he came on and then played a massive part in the, in the set-piece goal as well. Yeah, and, and exactly that. That's the quality that we know we're going to get from Tom. Uh, he's, he's shown that throughout his you know, short career so far and there's, there's a huge amount of upside to what he can achieve. And so it's keeping him fit and, and keeping him healthy and, and you know, making sure that we sort of build up his minutes slowly. Uh, that's, that's the key part of it because he can produce that and we know he can. One change in terms of team selection. Dane Scarlett came in for Ronan Curtis. What's wrong with him? Yeah, unfortunately for, for Ronan, we got some bad news late yesterday afternoon. And uh, yeah, Ronan's got a serious knee injury. He's, he's torn his ACL, which was a real, was a real blow for everyone. Um, yeah, I can obviously tell by your reaction. That was my reaction when I, when I got the news. We just weren't expecting it because of how innocuous the injury looked. And Ronan tried to play on right. That tells you everything you need to know about the guy so uh, yeah really really disappointing in terms of um, what happened to Ronan but 
Um, you know, we'll make sure we get that right in terms of rehab and what's right for Ronan. And we have other players that, that come in and, and, and affect the game. And um, you know, Dane's one of them, and Dane's done brilliantly well in the game so far to um, affect them, score goals, come off the come off the bench. Only put in a really good shift today. Probably didn't get a huge amount of joy on the attacking side, but put in a, a very good shift. Yeah, certainly a big blow for Ronan there, and our best wishes to go out to him, of course. Just one final one from me in terms of the support today. They didn't stop chanting throughout the whole 90 minutes. How much did they help you get the victory today? Um, massively. It's, it's probably what it was a bit like, um, a bit like kicking into the front end at the second half. It's just the ball sucked into the back of the net somehow, and that sounds like a strange thing to say, but it, but it actually happens. It um, at times it felt like a, a home game. It, it did it. Um, it did it. Plymouth. It did it. Peterborough. When well, saying those two because we lost those games, and I, I still heard the, the fans for the entire 90 minutes and, and again today it was just nice to reward them because it's a, it's a long old trek up here, just nice to reward them with an away win as well.